A long time ago, a traveller named Daisy was riding the stagecoach out west. She was going to visit her old Uncle Scrooge. Daisy was tired and thirsty and very hungry. She could hardly wait to reach her uncle's house. When the stagecoach pulled into town, everyone came out to see who it was. Goofy, the sheriff, walked up to Daisy. Howdy, he said. What can I do for you? I'm looking for Scrooge McDuck, said Daisy. Scrooge McDuck, cried Goofy. If you're tired and hungry as you look, you should go to the hotel. Then he pointed to a little yellow house. Old Scrooge lived there, he said, but no one ever pays him a visit. That's right, said Miss Clarabel. Old Scrooge must be the stingiest fellow in the West. Yep, said Goofy. He's the stingiest fellow in the West, all right. I've met stingy fellows before, said Daisy. Maybe I can teach my uncle a lesson. So Daisy went straight to the big yellow house and knocked on the door. When Uncle Scrooge opened the door, Daisy threw her arms around his neck. Surprise, she cried. I've come to pay you a visit, Uncle. Scrooge did not look happy to see his niece. I did not ask you to come, he shouted. But Daisy did not listen to him. She walked into the house. I'm very hungry, Uncle, she says. What, what do you have to eat? You won't find any food here, said Scrooge. He tried to hide some dirty dishes. There's no food in this house, he cried. Poor Uncle, said Daisy. You must be starved. She went to the cupboard and took out a big black pot. There on the shelf was a basket of fried chicken. Ah, she thought, my uncle is not as poor as he pretends to be. Daisy began to fill the pot with water. Uncle Scrooge jumped up and down. You cannot cook here, he said. I just told you, I have no food. But Daisy did not listen to him. She lit the fire under the pot. I don't need any food, she says. Her uncle's mouth fell open. What in the world can you cook with no food, he asked. Daisy took out an old red button. She held it under her uncle's nose and rolled it slowly between her fingers. With just this button, she says, I can cook enough food to fill that pot. You can make soup with just one button, said Scrooge. I don't believe it. He watched Daisy drop the red button into the soup. What do you call it? asked Scrooge. Button soup, said Daisy. Uncle Scrooge watched Daisy sniff the soup. Hmm, she thought. The stingiest fellow in the West isn't, is getting curious. Now Uncle Scrooge sniffed the soup. He did not smell anything. Daisy began to stir very quickly. As she stirred, she said, Whenever I make this soup at home, I always use some salt and pepper. But since you have no food in this house, I'll guess you have no salt and pepper. I don't have any food, said Scrooge, but I always have some salt and pepper for a rainy day. He lit a candle and opened the door in the ceiling and climbed up to the attic. The attic walls were covered with jars of spice. Scrooge held up his candle to see them better. He picked out jars of salt and pepper to add to the button soup. Daisy poured the salt and pepper into the pot. Uncle Scrooge watched. He could hardly wait to taste the soup. Daisy began to stir again. As she stirred, she said, Once I made this soup with an old soup bone, it really was delicious. But if you have no food, one button will just have to do. If all you need is an old soup bone, said Scrooge, I might be able to find one. He took a lantern and ran down to the cellar. Scrooge's cellar looked just like a butcher's shop. He had hams and chickens and turkeys and beef. He picked out a juicy bone to add to the soup. When Scrooge came back with the bone, Daisy dropped it into the pot. The soup began to bubble and boil. It smells good, said Scrooge. This soup won a blue ribbon at the state fair, said Daisy. But that time I had potatoes and carrots. If blue ribbon soup had potatoes and carrots, well, we shall have them too, said her uncle, and he ran out to the barn. Up in the hayloft, Scrooge and the Scrooge had vegetables, potatoes, carrots and big heads of cabbage. He grabbed a pitchfork and tossed the hay. He found some potatoes and carrots to add to the button soup. By this time the soup smelled so good, Uncle Scrooge was dying to taste it. And every time Daisy named something that would make the soup better, Uncle Scrooge rushed off to find it. He ran to the woodshed for some onions and celery. He milked the cow to get Daisy some cream. He dug up his garden for, to get her some turnips and carried everything back to the big black pot. At last the button soup was ready to taste. This is, so, this is too much soup for me, said Daisy, and it's too much soup for you. Let's ask someone to come share it with us. Share it, cried Scrooge. Let's pour it into jars and save it. Food is hard to get. But Uncle Scrooge, said Daisy, don't you remember we made this soup with just one button? That's right, said Scrooge, so we did. So Daisy ran to find everyone in town. 
She ran to Goofy the Sheriff. She ran to the ice cream parlour to find Miss Clarabelle. She ran to the general store for Mistress Minnie. She ran to the barber shop for Mickey and Cowboy Donald. And she told them all to come to Scrooge McDuck's house. When they came in, Scrooge gave them each a bowl. You sure are clever, said Miss Clarabelle. Scrooge is not the stingiest fellow in the West anymore. Daisy only winked her eye. Soon they all sat down to a button soup feast. It was really delicious. What a clever niece I have, said Scrooge. She made this soup with just one button. When time came for Daisy to leave, Scrooge went to the stagecoach to see her off. Come back and visit me soon, Daisy, he said. After all, thought Scrooge, such clever nieces don't grow on every bush.